Finally, I've been coming here since I was 10 years old. You want to know why? Because Camp Hope is the fun way to lose weight. Right, guys? It's a fat camp. Are you crazy? No way. I'm not going to a camp with a bunch of fat loads. Jerry? Now, that's not kind, Jerry. We're doing this for your own good. We got to nip this thing in the bud. I'm fine. This is a joke, right? We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This is Cheap Seat Reviews. Hello, and thank you for listening to Cheap Seat Reviews, the podcast that explores the Hollywood film industry for the greater good. The greater good. This is... <laughs> nice. This is episode 484, and today we're talking about heavyweights, the Disney movie Heavyweights, the 1995, uh, I wouldn't call it a classic, but it is what it is. Uh, oh movie. yeah, it's classic. It's a, it's a classic to us, uh, maybe to no one else. I don't know. Maybe people out there who's listening to this, maybe this is a movie you love. I don't know. I am Sean. Holy cow, this was filmed in North Carolina, all red. And joining me, as always, is Andrew. Did they steal the outboard motor from the other camp's boat for the go-kart, Jimison? And apparently it can make you, your go-kart fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it yeah. can. Yeah. Oh, well. So, so welcome. How's it going? Hey, good. That's good, buddy. How are you doing? I'm good. My back yeah. hurts a little, but oh, that's well. just because I'm getting old. Yeah, you're almost 40. So, uh, yeah, almost. Uh, so, yeah. Enjoy that. Yeah, I woke up. This this is legit. I woke up. A uh, little bit of a headache, but it, it's probably because I, I didn't drink a lot of water yesterday. So I woke up and I was like, oh, I'm feeling a little, little dehydrated. You know, I need to get some water. So take the dog outside for her 6 a.m., uh, you know, feeding and watering and stuff. And at some point, no idea how. But some point between uh, bending over to get her food and then sitting down on the couch, I pulled a muscle in my like my pectoral muscle here, in my, and I I hurt <laughs> okay. all the way back getting into bed. And then when I woke back up, you know, an hour and a half, two hours later for a time to to start my day, I was still very sore from it, as if I had like, you know, deadlifted hundreds of pounds. I was very sore. And I'm just like, yeah, welcome to 40s. Uh, just it is what it is. So. And stuff just stops working. <laughs> yeah. 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 Things start hurting that didn't hurt before. Yeah. It's it's very weird and frustrating. Yeah. Um, also, I am excited to announce, no one really cares, I'm drinking tonight. I don't usually talk about my beverage, but I'm drinking a Mexican Coke. Yeah, that's it's, where they put real cocaine in it, right? It's real. It's real uh, cane sugar uh, is what it is. Carbonated oh. water cane sugar. That's the number two cane sugar. So it's not high fructose corn syrup. Oh, that's that murderous rapist Coke. It's delicious. Whatever. According, you want I'm sorry. <laughs> According to our some of our legislatures and and government officials. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Or former. Government officials, I should say. Well, there's there's still some people. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, there's a current guy trying to run for governor in North Carolina who is a flat earther. I, I, I don't know how <laughs> this man has uh, made it as far as he has. But that's, have you heard the the newest conspiracy? Oh, there's a conspiracy. I love there's there's a new conspiracy out there. Helen Keller didn't ever exist. Oh, she was fake. Yeah, there are people out there that are now saying Helen Keller was made up. Why? Because they don't think that a deaf and blind person could write a book or could could write anything. Like they don't believe that could happen. So Helen Keller is in fact fake news. Oh, okay. Yeah, just get ready for that one if you haven't heard it yet. That's a fun one. I, I uh, okay. Well, why not? I mean. So much else out there is is fake that's not, but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's fun. Um, you know what's not fake yeah. news though? Heavyweights. 
Heavyweights. <laughs> Heavyweights. It's definitely not fake <laughs> news. So my middle name was the Holy Cow. This is from North Carolina. So I, I have seen this movie uh, many times, uh, yeah. as I know that you have. However, Me too. Last, yeah. last week, uh, I think you said that this is like a, a yearly rewatch for you. It is. I watch this quite often. Yeah. And uh, I've probably watched it. I probably haven't watched it since uh, graduating high school. But I know that in the, you know, it came out in 95. So like 96, 97, early freshman, sophomore years. I probably watched this a lot. Uh, I was also, but I was also really into like those 90s Disney movies, Cool Runnings, The Mighty Ducks, you know, and Mighty Ducks is appropriate because like half this cast is from the Mighty Ducks and, or half Uh the kid cast, I should say, it's from the Mighty Ducks. And so... Uh, so I've seen this movie a bunch. So it wasn't until watching it this week for the show that I, I I'm watching it and and uh, the scene. Um, I guess tell people I should do this first. First, what is what is heavyweights, Andrew? Well, according to IMDb, <laughs> plump kids are lured into joining a posh fat camp. It's, it sounds like the beginning of a horror film. Um, it really does. <laughs> Yeah, lured. plump kids are lured into joining a posh fat camp with the promise of quick weight loss and good times, only to find out it is a woodland hellhole run by a psycho ex-fitness instructor. That, so that, that's not <laughs> whoever really wrote this, all. <laughs> it's really not, uh, because it wasn't a, a woodland hellhole until the Bushkins uh, couldn't afford it anymore. And so yeah. they had to file for bankruptcy it yeah it's, it's not like it wasn't like <laughs> ben stiller's character tricked kids to coming to his camp he just bought a fat camp because he was trying to sell an infomercial on his weight loss regimen like that's yeah it's not even close to true but whatever i mean it's no use in arguing with uh imdb um yeah uh, person speaking of of being lured to the camp Tim Blake Nelson, right? Yeah, the guy from from O oh Brother Where Art Thou, who who yeah. plays the kind of like recruiter for camp, I guess. Mm-hmm. Do we ever see him again in the movie? No, no, he's he's definitely our hopping man in this movie. <laughs> he's yeah. in there just to recruit the kid, and maybe that's the lure that happens to get him to come to camp. But then we never see him again. Like he, that would never happen in real life. Like somebody it, that works at a camp. Is not going to come recruit you to go to that camp, and then you never see them at the camp. They always work at the camp somehow. Yeah, yeah. I, Even if it's and, in their and, business office or whatever. Was he like some hedge hunt or some headhunter that they hired? Because I mean, this guy was in California, where yeah. where the kid lived or something. Like, he was... go forth and find the fat children. <laughs> I don't. This feels like a <laughs> camp that doesn't need you to go out and recruit. Right, <laughs> you know, like, like heavily, but I don't know. But you're right. His his character is a little, a little strange. He's just yeah. and he's a weird dude anyway. So it just seems like a strange person to have do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think the scene works. You don't you don't really need him in there. Jeffrey Tambor can just just be the dad and say this is what's happening. Yeah, here's a video. We found a video. Watch the video. This is what's happening. So. Or, or this yeah, was yeah. mailed to us. Yeah. You know, yeah, that works too. I don't know why we need the crazy camp recruiter. <laughs> I don't know either. But anyway, there there he is in all his glory. Old Buster Scruggs. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so so back to my, my story that I started was, so I'm watching the movie. So the kid, he, he has to go to camp. So he lands. He, he's First of all, he's put on an airplane by himself. Again, this is the 90s. Kids flew. Yeah across the country by themselves. And um, I love that Keenan Thompson, by the way, I've met him, super nice guy. Mm-hmm. And name drop, I apologize, but I don't really apologize. And he, uh, you know, he, he's like, hey, you're a fat kid on a plane by yourself. Obviously, you're going to the same camp that I am. So let's hang out together, which is cool. And um. They get there, and then the counselor seems like a really nice guy. Like, everything just seems, like, super awesome, right? And then they're driving down the road, 
And in the shot, it's it's this perfect shot of you know corporate or not corporate America, but like America where the bus is traveling, and in the single shot you see McDonald's, Taco Bell, I think a Wendy's, uh-huh. a Burger King, and a Bojangles. Now and that is that's on a road where I drive on a regular basis. Actually, I did it today. Sure. In Hendersonville. So yeah. so I I so I see that and I go, Bojangles. Wait a minute. This this is filmed. Oh no, it wasn't it wasn't Wendy's, it was Hardy's. Hardy's, yeah. And it was yeah. Hardy's and not Carl's Jr. And I thought, oh, this is the South. This is in the Southeast, um, somewhere. Yeah. So so I get kind of excited. And then the next shot is an aerial of the bus traveling on what is clearly the Blue Ridge Parkway. Uh-huh. And I thought, wait a minute, this is North Carolina. So I pull right. up IMDb and scroll down. Sure enough, parts of it were Asheville, parts were in Hendersonville, and parts of it were, um, uh, well, most of it, and, and uh, Flat Rock. Um, Flat Rock. Um, uh, right, which is in uh, Henderson County. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where they filmed literally the scene where he's like on the rock when he jumps over the thing and does the whatever. So, yeah. Like, Oh my gosh, this is in North Carolina. So I was super excited because you know I love North Carolina movies and 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 I just I didn't know that this was a North Carolina movie until I was watching it. So that was that was pretty cool to see. So uh and yeah, then there was a- you sent me the message and I said and, and then I had to go look like because I looked it up on MDB just like after you sent that message and I said, Oh my gosh, I literally live 20 minutes from every one of these locations. Yeah. Uh, it was East Henderson High School is, you know, right across the, the county, uh, about 20 minutes from me. And that's like the op- one of the opening scenes is you see East Henderson High School because uh, he's, of course, a high school kid. Yeah. Well, he's he's 11, isn't he? <laughs> well, that's what I found weird because you see the high school and the high school bus. But then yeah. they do talk about his age. Like, I'm not sure how old yeah. he's supposed to be. I just assumed that he's in high school. Yeah, and I always have. Cause, but cause he's. Ben Stiller says it at the end of the movie. Yeah. He's like, such and such, age 11, 140 pounds. You know, he, he gives out yeah. his stats. So, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, but, I guess it could be a. I mean, it's not in real life, but it could be one of those schools where, you know, it's like a. K-12 a middle school, high school, yeah, I got you. Six twelve school, yeah, yeah. I, they just needed to have an intro where basically everything is just shitting on him all on his whole way home, and uh, uh, just a, a montage of uh, or uh, yeah. This movie has several montages in it, and several of them are I refer to as the montage of misery, where right, <laughs> it's just which I feel like I've lived that montage before. Yeah. Of, yeah. did, you ever, did you ever miss the bus and have to chase after it? Ever happened to you? No, I was fortunate enough to never have to ride the bus as a student. Oh, see, I did. I rode the bus. No, I never missed it. The closest, well, one day I didn't miss it, but that's because I got hurt at the school and they had to call the, my mom and I had to go to urgent care. But the only other time where I got super embarrassed on the bus is... I was getting on the bus and the guy closed the door on my backpack and I couldn't, I couldn't get in the bus and he starts driving and I'm yelling at him. I'm like, I'm stuck. And of course all the kids are laughing and he's yeah. just like, just, just hang out until we get to the next stop. So I had to stand there with my backpack stuck in the door and for like five or six minutes until we got to the last stop. And then he opened the door so I could then go in. I was so mad and I was so embarrassed and, I mean, if it was a movie, you know, I would have just like wanted to kill myself. It was, it was so rough, but <laughs> yeah, it was, and it was also one of those, like from that point on, I kind of made sure that when I got on the bus, I was very quick, Yeah, you know, it's like basically like jump through the door. So it, I, I wouldn't give him the opportunity to do it again. Uh, anyway, uh, what's your five word review for this, Andrew? Well, I have two. Uh, and one is only four words. I'll start with that classic nineties kid comedy. Okay. Nice. 
And then <laughs> my second one, um, holy cow, there's a post credit scene. Um, <laughs> that's way more than five words. But as I've told you, I've watched this movie. I don't know how a countless number of times. Sure. I never knew there's a post credit scene until this I don't watch. Think I knew that either. There's a post credit scene. Yeah. So basically Ben Stiller as his character. Oh yeah. He's a salesman. Yeah. He, yeah. He knocks on a door and he's trying to sell like gems or gemstones or something. Yeah. I had never seen that before this watching. And That's I was like, hard. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. Uh, because, you know, I grew up watching this movie. It came out right at the perfect time for me. I was in fifth grade when this came out and fifth, sixth grade, somewhere in there. And I was never a, a chubby kid, chunky kid, but I was not a skinny kid either. You know, I wasn't a twig. Yeah. So I felt like I kind of fit in with this group of people. Like I could go, I felt like I could kind of go to that camp. Matter of fact, it made me want to go to camp. Because I was like, oh, cool. Camps have those blob things and go-karts. And yeah, like, I want to do that stuff. Archery, you know. Um, so I thought, that's awesome. But then I remembered, I hate going outside. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and I remembered my, my parents probably couldn't afford to send me to a camp. So I never went to a camp. Uh, well, I, I take that back. I did go to church camp in middle school. But it was not like, not like that. It was not like that, yeah. No, no, no. Um, but yeah, this movie, it has a lot of nostalgia for me because it did come out at a great time. And my brother and I, there's very few movies that I remember watching with my brother. Uh, he's three years younger than I am. And so we didn't, and he's an outdoorsy person. Like he's a fisherman, hunter, motorcycle rider. And I am not that kind of person. Sure. Um, so there's not a lot that we do that we both enjoy doing together. Um, but I specifically remember watching this movie with him and how he would quote the movie constantly. Nice. And now my brother was more of a chunky kid than I was. So I felt like the two of us fit, fit this, uh, I guess, I don't know, intended audience of chubby white kids uh, in the, in the summer of 95. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I, I we always loved it. I, we, we loved making fun of it and laughing at it. And I still laugh at it. You know, the German guy, when he's tied to the tree, <laughs> <laughs> Lars. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that always makes me laugh. It, it, <laughs> can be. it is funny. <laughs> that scene where they, when they put the honey on his, on his chest. Right. And, and they're like the you know the bears are going to get you whatever. And then as they're walking by, he's like, "There's no bears in these woods." And he, of course, he starts screaming, and it's a it's a deer, which right. is funny. But now that we know where this is filmed, there are bears in those woods. Like, oh yeah, lots yeah. of them. That's that's <laughs> a legit dangerous thing that they did. But uh, it's a movie, so it's a Disney movie, so everybody's going to be fine, uh, unless you're walking on glass. But still, right. Or laying on nails, yeah, a hammer thrown at a chunk of ice. Oh, Ben Stiller! This, I, I, I totally had blacked out that Ben Stiller was the bad guy in this movie. I just, oh, really? Because you don't like yeah, Ben Stiller. I don't really like Ben Stiller movies, and seeing him as a villain, I'm totally fine with. I'm like, oh yeah, this makes sense. He's, he is, he's the villain, which I'm totally fine with, and. But yeah, the the walking on glass at the end was just a weird over the top yeah thing, and of course it's just it's just sugar glass, you know. It's not. I mean, it's kind of sharp, but not not really. Right. And um, I still wouldn't want to do it. I wouldn't want to do it either. But you know, <laughs> he's he he is doing now. He might have some kind of rubber protection you know on his feet or something like they did for the hobbits right you right know, yeah the actors are wearing basically shoes that look like hobbit feet uh so that they're not walking actually barefoot around new zealand but yeah anyway uh so, oh go ahead no i was just gonna do my five word oh yeah go ahead yeah do your five word 
Uh, 90s kid versus adult film. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it felt like we had a lot of those back then. Mm-hmm. Where, where the adults were kind of the bad guy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, this it kind of felt like, you know, same, it, kind of the same ilk of the, as a Monty Ducks or something like that. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, when you think about the '90s kids movies, um, you've got Mighty Ducks. You've got, I think there was a, a Parent Trap that came out with Lindsay Lohan at that time, mm-hmm. uh, or maybe that might have been a little later. Uh, what else? What else is '90s kids movies? Oh geez, um, I do remember a, a one called Angus, uh, which is more of a coming of age story, not really a kids versus uh, adults movie. Let's see. Oh man, wait, well, you got? I've already searched it here. You've got Matilda, which is definitely kids against adults. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mighty Ducks. You've got um, the Little Giants. Little yeah, Little Giants. Um, oh, there was another football movie that was. Sort of like Little Giants. Was it Little Big League? No, that was a baseball. Uh, that was a baseball. But you're right. We had Rookie of the Year and then Little Big League, which were basically at the same time. Right. Um, Angels in the outfield. Angels in the outfield. Beethoven. Again, kids. You know, the dad doesn't believe them. Um, right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's yeah. See. I mean, that... lots, lots of it came out at that time where we mm-hmm. had that kids against adults um in the 90s and this one certainly fits that mold yeah heck even the iron giant i think kind of fits in that mold Mm -hmm. where you have a kid versus the adult so yeah it uh it was a time man what a time to be alive (laughs) yeah we we had so and the really cool thing is i'll say this the really cool thing about those movies is I think for the most part they've aged well mm-hmm. because I'm watching them with my kids and they're having a good time. Like we watched the Sandlot the other day and you know for the show and my kids really had a good time with it. Mm-hmm. And but also my my kids are just uh and maybe it's the age because your kids are a little older. But Slightly. right now yeah. if I said hey let's watch such and such my kids are into it. Like they're just like if dad says let's watch a movie we're gonna watch a movie. Yeah. And um my younger one is that way though. I can yeah. which he's the same age as your your son. Yes. So yeah. 11, you know, yeah. They 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 still somewhat listen to dad. Yeah. At that age. <laughs> yeah, your oldest is what 13 now? Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, and his his mind is elsewhere. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. So, we'll we'll, we'll see what happens with 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 my my eleven year old, if if that's how if that's what happens, and if it is, that's fine. Um, not really. I don't really know kind of what else because see with this kind of movie, and it's a little bit of a farce kind of movie because it's mm-hmm. you know it's not like a parody, but you know the bad guy is such a a weird character. He really is a cartoon yeah. character. That, um. Like you kind of understand what's going on in the movie and, and you just kind of go with it. I will say this. So you had two, you have three, so there are basically, well, there's five adults in the movie that have a lot of screen time. And there's more, but you basically have Ben Stiller. You have the German Pat. counselor. Well, yeah. Lars. Yeah. Lars. Yeah. You have Pat, who is the uh, other counselor that's been there forever. You have the skinny counselor and then you have the female doctor lady. The uh, nurse, yeah. The nurse, which give us gives you a little bit of uh nurse Julie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean that German actor, and I think he actually is German too, which is great. Uh he Oh, I don't know. I, I think I'm not, he will find out. Yeah. There we go. Tom Hodges, um, born in Chicago, Illinois. Oh yeah, definitely not. No, I I miss <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely not at not all. German. No. Uh he's mostly known for this movie. Uh Shoot the Moon and Steel Magnolias. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, definitely not uh, not Dermot at all. That's okay. He hasn't uh, <laughs> he hasn't done much acting. I mean, how could you not with such a portrayal as as uh, German stereotype that he was in this movie? <laughs> Also, I got really confused. So the guy that's the counselor for the other other camp, the the jock camp or whatever they were called, the, the baseball coach looking guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he and he's in a bunch of things. Um he's in a bunch of things. Uh like for example, he's Bob in UHF, right? Like he's Weird Al's best friend mm -hmm. in UHF, which is great. Um but when I saw his name on the on the on the cast list, I wasn't really paying attention. I thought David Bowie is in this film. I don't remember I, him. I thought the same film. thing. Yeah, I saw it this time, and I was like, David Bowie. Yeah, I wasn't <laughs> yeah. paying attention either. Yeah, because I, I kept looking for him. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay, I, I don't feel so bad now. <laughs> I thought, Wait no, I minute. kept waiting. I was like, all right, I've seen this movie a ton, and somehow I've missed David Bowie. So I was like, yeah. who is he? Uh, yeah, and then I saw that, and I was like, "Oh wait, that's not Bowie." I, man, I didn't realize how many movies that he has been in that we have reviewed. Um, oh, he's also so okay. Hold on, let's do this real quick. This is just going to be fun for me and probably no one else. But I, I find this interesting. So I just said that he was in. He's in UHF, which we did a little while ago. Mm -hmm. All right, he is also in. Uh, we haven't done a few good men. We should do that because it's Sorkin, and you know I like Sorkin. But he's in The Rock. He's the guy that goes into the the room with Nicolas Cage, and he's like, "You want me to stab me? Stab this in my heart?" He's the guy that goes in with the bomb thing, you know? Yeah, that's him. So he's in that. So that's two movies. Uh, we already said that. Uh, he was also in an episode of Deep Deep Space Nine, so that's our Star Trek connection for the for the episode. Thank you very much. And then I scroll up here a little bit more, and then he I saw that he was in. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Sorry, he's been in a bunch of stuff. Star uh, Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen. We did that one, didn't we? Didn't we do? I know we did one of the we did one of the Transformers movie. We did one I with can't. Stanley Tucci. I tried to block those out. I, I can't remember. remember. I can't remember if we did that one or not. He was Smithsonian Guard. Yeah. Maybe we didn't do that one. I can't remember. But he was also in Rubber. Oh, really? It's like episode three for us. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, Rubber. So, yeah, he's been in a few films that we've done. And now this one. So, good for him. I still, one of these days, I mean, I know it's going to be so incredibly hard to do, but I'd love to put together a spreadsheet of, you know, oh, oh, dude, we live in a time of AI. Right. Oh my gosh. I can have AI do this. I have the, I have a spreadsheet. I can just take uh -huh. that spreadsheet and import it into, you know, Copilot and say, scan all of these movies and tell me what actors are the most in common yeah yeah oh you could do that i just i found a project for me to do this week at work all right <laughs> because I, ha I have access to copilot at work nice yeah i'm excited okay um one of the other really funny things is so the other skinny the, the skinny uh tim the the skinny um paul fig yeah he when we first meet him, he's wearing a Panthers jersey that's cut off so you can <laughs> right. see his belly. Right. And it says 95. And I'm like, my wife says, 95? That's a Panthers jersey. Who was number 95? And I said, well, I don't know, but 95 was their inaugural season. So it might just be an inaugural yeah. jersey because they did sell those. Well, yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that either. So. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So more, again, more of the Carolina connection, North Carolina connection, which I'm all for. But I don't know. There's just, uh, 
I just, I don't know. I love it. I, I saw the trailers playing again on IMDb, and it's that scene where the bus like fakes that they're going to go into Burger King or something like that. It's <laughs> right. the same shot. I, I yeah. love it. I really do. It's so funny. This so, movie really uh, is funny, too. I, I have to say, it that. is. I think it's a funny movie and clever. Yeah. I used to think with my brother, we would try to think of hiding places for food. Oh, sure. Yeah. Cause you see in their cabin, like, all these places that they hide their food. And I was like, hmm, I wonder what we could do to hide food. Yeah. And of course, we never did because we would have gotten in trouble because we'd have forgotten about it. And yeah, mice ants or and smells mice. or ants. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the whole <laughs> hollowing out the the bedpost or yeah. the, you know, the chest in the floor, like those are smart kids. Well, okay, so the trailer's playing, and to your point, so the first thing, so speaking of the the hollowing out, and they're pouring candy in there, the first right. thing that my son says is, how do they get that candy out? <laughs> what, what do you mean? So, like, it's like, it, oh, so the top oh yeah, block, yeah, yeah. It takes the top off, and they're just pouring candy down in there. Right. And, you know, it's like, how do they get the candy out? And of course, I was like, well, maybe at the bottom, there's a trap door at the bottom that pours the candy out at the bottom. Right. You just load from the top. He goes, oh, okay. And then at the end, and then later on, he like pulls the top off and there's like link sausages attached to it and stuff like that. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but there were some other jokes that I thought were really funny that the kids kind of, it kind of went over their heads. So there was just yeah. a shot of a cow running and then the kids are chasing after the cow. <laughs> Right. And my kids are like, are they going to milk the cow? And I said, I think the joke is that they're so hungry, they're willing to slaughter the cow and eat it. And they're like, oh, that's dark. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I tell you, another thing that I think I really related to this movie about was the fact that I was forced to play baseball throughout all of elementary school and mm. I was no good at it at all. Like I was, I just sucked at baseball and I hated it, but I was forced to play it because it was something that got me outside and kept me active. Sure. Um, which I appreciate now in my later years that my parents made me do that, but I hated it at the time. And watching these guys play baseball is like, to me, one of the funniest parts of the movie. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're just terrible at it. And I was the kid who paid absolutely no attention to what was going on to the game. And I was just out in the outfield, you know, staring at clouds or whatever. Yeah. I I do think it's interesting that the, the movie is saying that because they're fat, they're therefore they are unathletic. Right. Yeah. Uh, which I find a, a little strange. Again, this movie, you know, it's, it's just playing on tropes, but again, what there's like four kids in this movie that are in the Mighty Ducks, so it's like right. Which which way is it? Can you can be heavy and athletic or or not? You know, because like you know, you get the one kid that's the goalie. Keenan Thompson shows up. The main character in the movie is also in that. You know, he's a he's a hockey player, so it's mm -hmm. you know, it's just kind of funny. Um. The only really plot hole I will say is this. So as again, as I'm watching the trailer, it's the it's the scene where Goldberg tricks him into falling into the pit. Yeah. But you've got the group of kids, but there's the one kid that technically works for Ben Stiller. Yeah. Who used to be in the chipmunk bunk and was the one who buys the, the fast food for them. That's that's the thing. It's like at what point does he flip? Yeah. Because he 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 sells them out with all the candy, shows him where all the st the stashes is, and then all of a sudden he's now buying fast food and putting it in the stumps so that they can all get snacks. And then he's like on their side throughout the rest of the movie. I we never see a moment where he flips. Or like where he gets caught for, just, you know, selling. Yeah. Or just, or just something that would, that 
you know, have Ben Stewart him yell a reason. at him. Yeah, it gives him a reason for him to go, okay, he's he's too mean on these kids. Yeah. You yeah. know, like I used to be you guys or something like that. Like there's there's not that moment. And I think that's interesting, but that's really honestly my only complaint. Uh, <laughs> we'll say that that hole that Ben Stiller falls in in this movie is like a perfectly square hole that yeah. someone has dug with a uh you know excavator or something. Yeah. Oh, it was clearly like a, a some kind of trap or something. Um, yeah. I mean, it was obviously done that on purpose, but yeah. And then uh, the only other kind of thing that kind of bothered me is the is the relay race at the end of the movie. Yeah. Where it, 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 I know it's supposed to be super feel good, but like for comedic moments, it shows. So like the movie, like it starts off where they're doing the sack sack jump, right? And the kid, he's falling down, but he he catches up. He's doing okay. And then they get to the wall climb, and like the skinny kid is up and over the wall in ten seconds, and then he's on to like the next activity, and then it cuts back to them trying to like push this kid up the wall, and he hasn't made it off the ground yet, and then we cut back to the skinny kid who's doing the next thing and then all of a sudden the heavyweight team has now caught up and i thought how did they get him over that wall like it felt like every time there was a insurmountable obstacle we don't see how they overcome the obstacle so then you get little smart british kid who goes who goes up to the first thing and is like that's the mona lisa and this is the thing and that's the whatever and i'm like how did the smart kid who doesn't know, like he saw the Mona Lisa and says, I can't remember what he says, but it's some dumb answer. How did he progress to get to the last one? Name five vice presidents. Yeah. And then, and then the little kid walks up and just rattles off five of them. And then laughs about Americans not knowing our history, which is true. But then I thought, but that kid, that blonde kid should still be there at the end of the movie. Like he would still be stuck there. Right. He had no clue unless he remembered what that other kid said and spouted it off. It's just it, it felt like that there shouldn't it shouldn't have been as close as it was. But of course, it makes for a better movie if it comes down to a go-kart race with their souped up stolen go-kart. Um, you know. Yeah. It makes for a better movie, but still all I can think of is that blonde kid should still be there. He should still be there now, right? Like, right. <laughs> like that's the cut scene. Your 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 post credit scene is him still mm-hmm. standing there with the nurse, like Dan Quayle. Um. So, yeah. Uh, another one of my favorite scenes of this movie is the dance. Yes, the, the girls' camp and the boys' camp come together for this dance. And it is the most awkward thing ever. But that's how all middle school dances are. Yep. I agree. I mean, it's just nobody wants to get in, uh, close to each other. But then at the end, when they're when he's like realizing, when Ben Stiller's character realizes they're having fun, he says, all right, we're going to break this up. We're going to stop. And yeah. the one kid at the end who's like making out with the girl. Yeah. Like, there's always that kid at the middle school yeah. dance who somehow ends up making out with a girl. Yeah. And good for her. And him, I should say. So the girl that comes up and asks where the bathroom is, her character is Angelic Girl. Yeah. She, That's her character. Have a name. name. Yeah. Angelic <laughs> Girl. And she she lives, she was she's from South Carolina. She's from Columbia. Huh. So she was, you know, some a local kid that was looking for, you know, a spot on a film and there you go. She hasn't done much acting since either. Uh, it's not or since, but uh, let's see. Lauren was spotted by a Playboy scout at a swimsuit competition, and she graced the cover in October of 2000, the issue of Playboy, and was chosen to be Playmate of the Month in February 2001. So, you know, who's, who's Lauren? She's the girl that was angelic, uh, girl. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Yeah, she would go Sorry, on to, uh, yeah, she would go on to do um to do Playboy. So huh. good for her, I guess. 
and Baywatch. Yeah. Uh, she's also been featured in music videos for Brian Adams, Weezer, Mark Anthony, and Justin Timberlake. Oh, nice. Uh, she's, she's modeled for a bunch of plays, and she's made guest appearances on Baywatch, Entourage. Uh, and she appeared as herself on Fear Factor, Meet the Barkers, and The Girls Next Door. Huh. So, and she's married to, well, she's married to, oh, nobody. Never mind. <laughs> he, has, he has a link. His name, his name is uh, Sean Patrick Flannery, and he has an IMDb link. I thought, oh, she's married to an actor. No, he, he, he's not. But angelic girl. So there you go. So if you want to, you know, figure out what she's up to, just go find the uh, October issue of 2000 Playboy and you can see what she looks like now or 24 years ago, I guess I should say. So I don't know if you've taken a second to look at some of these, these actors as now that they are adults, how much they've changed. Yeah, like, especially the lead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Schwartz. He's a good I mean, looking dude. He's like model material now. Yeah. Like he's cut. And I would have never thought that watching this as a kid that he would grow up to be like that, you know? Mm hmm. And then this Cody Berger guy. He, I mean, you can't really see him, but in his IMDb picture, you can tell he's definitely like slimmed up, but he's wearing like a karate gi or something. So, oh, I mean, interesting. yeah. His, okay, his IMDb uh, actor page is pretty interesting, especially when you get to Guardians of the Galaxy 2. He was young ego facial reference, <laughs> which means when they were shooting the scenes of young you know, uh, Dennis, not Dennis Quaid, of young, um, gosh dang it, what's the actor's name? You know what I'm talking about. When he's doing those scenes with the with the mom, it's him sitting in the car, you know, doing all the stuff. Yeah. Just so that they can then 3D map the guy's face over. I can't think of his actor's name. He played Santa Claus. I can't, I can't believe I can't remember his name. Tim Allen? No. He played uh in the Santa Claus as we did for the podcast. It doesn't matter. Anyway. Okay. I don't remember a Santa Claus movie for the podcast. Okay, so now so now I have to do it. All right, hold on. <laughs> well, while you're looking, Sean Sean Weiss is also uh slimmed up quite a bit. Apparently he had a lot of trouble with the law as he as he got older. But Kurt uh, Russell. Gosh dang it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why didn't you say the Santa Claus movie? I did. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he played, he was in the Christmas Chronicles one and two. There you go. Which we did for the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Who, who, who did you say had also slimmed up? Uh, Sean oh, Weiss, the Weiss? Goldberg oh. guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Goldberg. Yeah. He's yeah. Yeah. He does a lot of, um, he does a lot of podcasts and stuff like that. I think maybe yeah. not. I can't remember. Anyway, the point is, is that, uh, people change when they grow up. I think that's the point. Um, maybe not, I don't know. but, uh, yeah. So I got some clips. So we're going to play a few clips here and then Let's we'll go on to the thing. We have a little tradition here, Jerry. The new guy drives the pin. Right, guys? Right. Yeah. Let's oh, try yeah. to keep it on the 70, all right? We got some weird local cops. I love that. I love the just the joke of, yeah, you get to drive the bus, and the kid, like, for a moment, thinks it's real. But my favorite line is, we got some weird local cops. And I'm like, it's Hendersonville. Yes, you yeah, do. It's a, yeah, you do. <laughs> and it's <laughs> and that's definitely a dad joke. I oh, mean, yeah. 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 I've said that my son has asked me before, can I drive dad? I'm like, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, let me have the keys. <laughs> yeah. I've t we actually did that. I did that very joke the other night. Um, we were leaving the restaurant and I'm like, okay, Daphne, who's eight. I'm like, you have to drive because your mom had a few drinks and I had a sip of her drink. So 
you have to drive. And she's like, wait, what? So, yeah. <laughs> Good dad joke. All right, Jerry Stiller being Jerry Stiller. One word of advice. <clears throat> Never let anyone sign your checks. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Jerry Stiller. He cracks me up. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure this was meant to be uh, racist. I think that was the intent. Okay. I see the future chairman of a Fortune 500 company. I see a famous rap artist. <laughs> I see the president of the United States of America. <laughs> He's from England. <laughs> I think that was obviously intentional. Yeah. Uh, also, did they not have fat cams in England? Uh, you know, just they had to send them all the way here. I guess so. But, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, I mean, they have better food standards there yeah uh outside a couple of years what was it like on the outside ah uh, it was incredible first i went to the got that all you can eat meal i closed the place so how we fixed for supplies on this end workers wiped us out there isn't a gummy bear left in this entire camp I just, I just love that the standard was the Sizzler back then. Yeah, going to the Sizzler. Oh, I love it. Um, this was a little bit long, but it really cracks me up. And if you edit this, this would make a really great kind of meme for any lots of different occasions you could use it for. All right, all right, fun. Fine, I blame myself. You know what? I don't blame myself. No, not this time, Tony. Excuse me one second. How you doing, little Tony? Bad. Why do you feel bad? Because everything's falling apart and I can't do anything about it. It's not your fault. Well, it's not my fault, but whose fault is it if it's not my fault? It's their fault. That's right. It's their fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. You have failed, and you will pay. Tomorrow morning at 0600, everyone who has not met their weight loss goal will join me on a 20-mile hike. What? Back light, boys. The party's over. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> it, the funny, the middle part is funny. But if you yeah. cut that out and just make it a quick, you know, clip, I could really, I could see someone saying, you know, like when your boss yells at you at work and you're like, yeah, you're right. It's my fault. Wait a minute. It's not my fault. It's your fault. You know, I, I could see someone doing that. Uh, I love this bit about Icarus because it's 100% not accurate at all or not right. Not right. <laughs> Did you ever hear the story of Icarus? We continually rolled the ball up the hill. But when he got too close, the ball melted in the heat of the sun. You're all like Icarus. I love that. Yeah, I Icarus had the wings, right? Yeah, Icarus had the wings uh, that were, um, he was told not to fly too high to the sun or they'll melt. Right. And, then, and the story was, don't let too much success get to your head and go you know basically the moral of the story is stay in your lane uh -huh. um, there is a story of greek story of a dude that has to push the the boulder up the, the hill. hill every yeah. day but the moral of that story is that he found joy in the mundane so yeah. it's uh but it's still funny but that's a joke that you know, you at 11 didn't get that joke. You have no, no idea what he's talking about. It's I you never know, heard the story of Icarus. Right. But it's now that you're college educated and you've you know read a book or two and, you know, seen some things, you're like, oh, that's funny because it's 100 percent inaccurate. Sisyphus is the one that rolled yeah. the ball up the hill, boulder up the hill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is titled Freak Out. Sorry to have to ask you to come up and deal with all this, Mr. Perkis. I don't know, that kid, he was always a little off. I mean, my parents didn't hug me. You don't see me freaking out like a little baby. 
Did you have any clue as a kid that that was the same actor that was also Ben Stiller? Yeah. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. I mean, it was I, it was pretty obvious. However, I didn't realize that Ben Stiller's actual parents are the Bushkins. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which you I mean, there's no wrong. reason why you would have known that, but Right. as a kid. But, you know, as you get older, you're like, "Oh, I, no, I didn't know that was his mom until I read the trivia." Yeah. Uh, but I knew that was his dad because Jerry Stiller is a he's a you know he's been in the industry for a hundred years. So, uh-huh. all right, time for this. And now for some more bad news. Ready? All right. Um, so we don't have any games again. Things are a little you know just the two of us. Do you have any uh, trivia you want to roll out real quick? There's just one really funny trivia that I want to talk about. So in in the uh, the movie, they talk about Seymour Butts. Like, whose candy is this? See yeah. more butts. Nobody's seen more butts than you, Uncle Tony, right? That joke was supposed to be Peter Fitz, which I had never heard this joke. But Josh was going to tell Tony that the chipmunk bunk snack hoard belongs to Peter Fitz. And then Tony asks, who's Peter Fitz? And Josh answers with, anyone's Peter Fitz if you push it hard enough. Um, and then, of course, because this is Disney, and because it's supposed to be fr- family friendly, it was changed to see more butts. Yeah, I've I'd never heard the Peter Fitz joke before, though. I, I've never heard it either. But it's funny you mention it because I remember when we watched this, you can see clearly that their mouths don't match up to what they're what you're hearing. Yeah, and Sarah says to me, she's like, "That's not what they're saying." And then my son said, what are they, what are they actually saying? I said, I don't know. So I, I read the trivia uh-huh. and, and I said, Oh, this is what they're saying. You're right. They are saying something different. So yeah. Yeah. Not exactly appropriate for. No. Uh, Disney. <laughs> uh, uh, but on the, on the uh, just real quick tangent, speaking of scenes where the actor says something, but they use a different line. Uh, yesterday we had some time to kill um, before we were going to go do meet up with my parents for my wife's birthday party thing where we went and did the uh, escape room unsuccessfully. So I'm, um, I, we have YouTube TV so I can still kind of like skip through channels right? I'm, I'm going through. Yeah. And on whatever channel it was, they had galaxy quest on. And I'm mm-hmm. like, Ooh, yeah. I'm going to put on galaxy quest. I haven't, I, you know, I love that movie. And it was only like the last 35 minutes, 45 minutes of the movie. But it, I still love the part where it's Tim Allen and Sigourney Weaver. And they, they turn the corner and they have to go through the mashers. Yeah. And and she says, oh, hell no. <laughs> but what she actually says is, oh, F that. <laughs> <laughs> and you can clearly see she drops the F bomb. Yeah. I love it. It's one of my favorite things ever. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. Uh, anyway, uh, time for this. This is where we're going to give the movie a score from zero to ten. And of course, we start with you, Andrew. Yeah, well, it's a 6.6 out of 10 on IMDb, but I'm going to go higher because this is a childhood favorite. I still love the movie, I think it still works. And, um, yeah, there's not much wrong with it as far as uh, <clears throat> as the the movie itself. So I'm gonna go maybe seven. I'm gonna go a whole whole point higher, seven point six higher. Okay, nice. Yeah, seven point six out of ten. Yeah, I like it too. It's fun. It's simple. It's a good time. It's a feel good story. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's a bunch of kids overcoming. Uh, a common enemy there's there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that so uh, i like it a lot i'm also going to give it a seven uh point one there we go so that gives us a nice score of a 7.35 and yeah yeah uh i didn't t- say this earlier but this of course is part of our month uh, long series of summer break movies so i mm-hmm. forgot to, forgot to mention that and uh yeah um, we're going to keep this episode short, mainly because people don't really care at home, but we're going to record um, next week's episode in the next 10 minutes so that we're going to start <laughs> it real soon. 
because uh, I'm going to be um, in another country next week and I will be unable to physically record. Uh, so we're going to keep this, this episode a little short. But normally we would ask if there were anything that we're watching um, right now. Uh, and I'm still, uh, I'm almost done with Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And uh, it pains me, but it, it's, it's coming to an end. But I, I really enjoyed that show. Yeah. And of course, I watched part of Galaxy Quest. But the big thing that I watched this weekend is Kung Fu Panda 4. Nice. Is, uh, is on Peacock. Not as good as one or two. Mm-hmm. I would I would I would lay it along with three. I think three is fine. I don't love three. I love one and two. Uh, the only criticism is I'm kind of getting tired of Aquafina being a character, a voice a voice character in things. Mm-hmm. It, just, it just feels like the last three years she's in everything. Everything. I mean. <laughs> Uh, you know, she's anyway I mean, she's a good actress i think she's good i'm just getting yeah. a, it's like josh gad was in everything for a little while just like uh, you know we, we go through these phases where an actor comes on the scene does something really good and then we get a lot of them for a short period of time and eventually we'll we'll be done but it's it's a good movie it's a fine movie but but my the best part of the movie is uh it's still Hans zimmer doing the score uh, mm-hmm. Along with another person, but they got Tenacious D to do a few covers. Oh, nice! And so they're in the movie. I mean, in the movie, not post credits. In the movie is, or maybe it is just the credits. Is "Hit Me, Baby, One More Time" by Tenacious D. Nice. I <laughs> and I loved it. Yeah, um, I I do know in the movie there's a fight scene that has a chinese version of score adaptation of the song crazy train oh okay and it's kind of awesome i'll have to check it out yeah you should just uh kung fu panda 4 soundtrack and just listen to crazy train yeah Uh, it's it's worth a thing you you watch anything else since we spoke last i think i don't don't remember if i told you about it last time but i watched uh, inside out 2 which is oh yeah definite yeah definite watch because it's it's really nice it's really good, um, and then I've been watching. There's new things out. Um, the uh, House of Dragons. I've been watching that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Game of Thrones prequel, and then the new season of The Boys, um, and uh, the Acolyte. Yeah, those are the ones that I've been nice watching lately. Cool. There's a couple other things I've been watching that I'll save for our next episode. Yeah. Uh, so while you wait for the next episode to come out, um, you can go to our website, cheapseatreviews.libson.com, and you can also uh, check out our YouTube page, youtube.com slash cheapseatreviews, and our newest episode, or uh, a new episode we'll be posting on there uh, uh, very soon. And hopefully, my plan is before I go on my trip to be completely caught up on YouTube. I apologize for being late. Uh, that means that this week you're going to get like three episodes this week to drop. So, <laughs> uh, and one last thing, big shout out to uh, a, a listener, a longtime listener of the podcast who has actually appeared on the show as a guest. Alan, thank you so much for lunch today. I got to meet up with Alan today. He had a oh cool. Uh, an audio question at his church and so he doesn't live that far away so we met up and had lunch and caught up and um and he we had him on the podcast uh let's see when was uh batman versus superman how long ago was that that's been a long time batman versus superman that was episode 125 um yeah that was june 26 so, gosh, almost exactly eight years ago. Wow, was and, it really? Yeah. Eight years ago. Oh, my gosh. And he he wow. brought up some stuff from that episode that he, he still had some. He, he's like, <laughs> by the way, here's some other things that I want to make sure I brought up. So, he's you know, he, he had some stuff to, to remind me that. Um, 
about, which I, I greatly appreciated uh, that he uh, he and I got together and uh, that he still listened, which is really cool. So he's yeah. been a long time listener of the show. I mean, like one of the OGs. So thank you, Alan. If you ever do listen to this episode, I do appreciate your patronage as well as your friendship. So, and he did remind me that he requested a movie about five years ago called <laughs> With Honors. And we still haven't done it. And it's never streaming. It's not streaming on any of the platforms that we typically use. Uh, I looked today and... Is this 94 with Joe Pesci? Yeah. Okay. With honors. It's on the Roku channel. It's on the Roku channel now. So yeah, I I think that it's that's something that we can, um, we can do because... We've done stuff on the Roku channel recently, so it's got ads. But, That's okay. So, so maybe Brendan uh, Fraser. Yeah. So maybe uh, come yeah. August when I get back from the trip, because I think we uh, we got some stuff already planned for for July. So maybe August we'll do. I don't know a month of movies we should have done or something like that. I don't know. Old requested movies. I don't know. We'll find out. But in the meantime, like I said, go to our website, check out all of our social media stuff, leave us a review. It's all super helpful. That's it. That's going to do it. So, on behalf of Andrew, this is Sean saying thank you all so much for listening. We'll see you next week for a goofy movie. That's right. <laughs> we'll see you. This is Cheap Seat Reviews.